right, so let's take a look at our next free response. Like always, I'm going to try and figure out what land I'm in. Do I have a numerical or categorical variable? How many groups do I have? All those fun questions. All right, the table below shows the scores on final exams from several randomly selected classes that use three different delivery types, online, face-to-face, -face, and a hybrid of these two. Okay, are the means for the final exams the same for all statistics class delivery types? Answer the question with a 3% alpha level. Assume that all final exam scores have common variances. Okay, so if I look at this, these numbers here, they are not frequencies, right? This is numerical data. This is somebody's score, a student's score on their final, and they took this online stats class. This is a score from a student's final that took their stats class face-to-face. -face. This is from a final exam of a student who took a hybrid stats class. All right, so what we're gonna see is if, if any one method um, produces a higher average than the other. But all that aside, I'm in mean land, right? So we see the word mean here. Again, this is numerical data. All right, so I'm in mean land. My variable in this problem is final exam score. I'm gonna assume that's coming in points. I mean, this could be percentage points. This could have meant they scored 72%, 84%, but it's not a relative frequency in terms of successes over sample size. So this is still a numerical variable we're looking at. I have three groups, right? So I have three levels or groups, if you want to call them, but levels is the official term if you're um, looking at averages. So I know k is going to equal 3. I'll keep that in mind. And let's see how many students we had overall. So we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that would double to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It looks like I had 16 students overall. Okay. Now because I had three or more groups, I know I'm going to run the one-way ANOVA. All right. So I'm going to be running an F test in a little bit. So let me scooch this up so we can get going on the write-up. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. So step one would be to find some parameters. I'm gonna define some mu's, because I'm in mean land. So mu one would be the true average final exam score. Uh, we'll go for the online stats class. And again, I'm going to just make this assumption that it's in points. Um, mu2 will go with the face-to-face, -face, so the true average final exam score for face-to-face. -face. I'm going to write F2F because I am that lazy and don't want to write new words. And mu3 sub will go with the true average final exam score for the hybrid students. All right, and we're trying to figure out, is any one delivery method better than the other? And before we get going on that, well, let me define the null, and then let's, let's get some gut feelings. So the null is that all delivery types are created equal. Right? Equality always happens in the null. Right? No one method, no one delivery type is better than the other. Um, so for the alternate, it would be at least two of the group means were not equal. And I'm going to scooch back up and get some gut feelings for this. I didn't take a look at my raw data, but let's go see if any one delivery method looked better than the other. So let's see our delivery types, get our data in here and see what we think. All right, so as I look at the online scores, it looks like they, what's their low? 72, high 84, and then we had up in the high 70s, low 80s. So maybe the average here is high 70s, low 80s. That seems reasonable, okay? Let's look at face to face. If I look at their low to high, just their spread, we're going what, 78 to 86? Okay, and then I would say the same thing. It looks like their average is high 70s, low 80s, 
right? So these two seem like they could be equal just by chance. Um, and then, or I could see this data just by chance, pending the null was true, excuse me. Here we're going 73 to 84. So the 73 would bring the average down a little bit, but again, this would still be high 70s, low 80s. So at this point, I'm leaning more towards failing to reject the null. I think that if the true means were all equal to each other, I could see this sample data just by chance. It seems kind of in line with that. So I have a feeling I'm gonna to fail to reject the null. I don't know for sure, but that's just what my gut feelings are telling me as I look at the data. So in order to find out for sure, well, let's go run the test. All right, so let's see what we got with this hypothesis test. All right, so I'm through step four. Oh, no, excuse me, step three. Four would be to get my alpha, and I, I have a funky alpha. I got 3% this time. All right, again, for assumptions, you're not going to need to check them, but I, as the teacher, will check them. So let's go ahead, and I'm actually going to abbreviate this just so I have some space over here. So instead of not equal, I'm going to write the inequality sign here just so I can write the assumptions out. Um, nah, I'm not gonna do that. JK, I'll give myself enough space to do this. So we'll go back and just write not equal. And now you get to sit here as I, I continue to change my mind. All right, let me move this up so we can get our assumptions written out. So for my assumptions, I would need independent random samples. And it did say I had random samples. And I'm gonna assume that since these are different students in each of these classes, that they're independent as well. So I have independent random samples. All right, now for normality, normality wasn't stated, All right, but I could make box plots. So if I take a look at my box plots, now I think I turned all my plots off on the previous example, let me go turn them all on right here. So you can see they're now all on. Let's hit zoom nine. All right, so all of my box plots are roughly symmetric with no outliers. I mean, I'll give you that this one down here, the hybrid data is skewed left, but keep in mind there were only four observations. All right, it's kind of wonky when you have a five number summary to summarize four numbers, right? So you're not always gonna get a perfect box plot but there's no outliers, so I'm gonna say, okay, all box plots roughly symmetric with no outliers. All right, so I'll check through that. All right, and in terms of, do I have common variances? Well, it was stated in the problem so I have common variances. And if you ever wanted to check that on your own, just take a look at the lengths of your box plots. They're all, especially these last two, they're roughly the same length. This one's a little bit shorter, but it's not too bad. And again, this is part of why I'm not gonna have us go in and officially check assumptions because it's, it's a little bit convoluted and obnoxious in, in one way ANOVA. So we're just gonna skip that step but I like to explain it just because I'm the teacher and I get a kick out of it. Um, so again, roughly symmetric, no outliers. Box plots, they're around the same length, so I'm, I'm good with common variances. All right, so step six, right, we are on the F distribution. Step seven, I'm gonna do one-way ANOVA. All right, step eight, I need my degrees of freedom between and my degrees of freedom within. So my degrees of freedom between the three groups, well, I have three groups, so I lose a degree of freedom, so that's two. My degrees of freedom within the three groups, well, I had 16 students, but I had three groups, so I have 13 degrees of freedom within. All right, moving from there, let me scooch this up just a little bit more. All right, so for step nine, we know our F test statistic is always the mean squares between in ratio to the mean squares within. And let's see what we're getting from our calculator. I had three data sets, so here we go. We're gonna do stat test, go to ANOVA, L1, L2, L3. 
and I am looking ooh, at an F test statistic of about 0.639. I'm going to just write my p-value here. It would be the probability that f was greater than 0.639. And if I wanted to use fcdf, I could. All right, I could say it was fcdf, um, 0.639, positive infinity, and then 213. So let me move this all the way up so we can get everything in view. So I could say this was FCDF, 0 0.639, 13. And when I do that, I would have seen that the p-value is about 54%. All right, let's go ahead and graph this. So I'm going to draw my unimodal skewed right graph. I'm going to label it with F. 0.639 is about here-ish. Again, keeping in mind that 1 is sort of under the peak. It moves a little depending on degrees of freedom. But I need to shade quite a large percentage, right? I need to shade 64% of the area under that curve. And if you wanted to see what this looked like, um, you could use your calculator. You could do the shade F if you wanted to. I don't always recommend it because you have to really adjust the window and make it work for you. I, I kind of think it's a little bit obnoxious to do, but you can do, oops, I did shade chi-squared, excuse me. So we can do shade F. We can type in our test statistic of 0.639. We can go to infinity. We can do our mean squares between and within. And let's adjust our window now. Let me just be proactive before I hit enter. Um, again, it, this is going to be the F axis here, the X min and max. So the lowest F could be with zero. The highest, I mean, it could technically go to infinity, but I'll put it at 10. I'll leave the Y min and max where it is. The Y axis is always your probability. So the Y axis would go from zero to one. I'm just gonna go a little bit below that just so I have a little bit of a buffer. All right, so let me go back here and let's hit enter and see what we're working with. And it should shade a large percentage. And when I look here, I can see that this was actually still the hyperbola version. So I can go ahead and remark mine, give it a moment, it still takes a while, and there we go. But I say the hyperbola version, it's coming in from the top of the y-axis, that one, and it's coming in that way. So if you wanna go ahead and rewrite this and make it look like a hyperbola, you're more than welcome to. I'm just not that worried about it. By the time we get to chi-squareds and Fs, things get a little bit wonky. So I'm a little bit more loosey-goosey with the write-ups. All right, step 13. What are we gonna do? We're gonna to fail to reject. Because our p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject h naught. So again, we potentially made a type two error, all right? And we would say our data was not statistically significant. So there is not sufficient evidence of a difference in the average of final exam scores based on delivery type. Is not, or there is not sufficient evidence all right, of a difference in average final exam scores um, based on delivery types. Okay, so that's good news if you're taking an online class. We're saying, hey, it's no better or worse if you take an online or a face-to-face -face or a hybrid in terms of how you're gonna do. And that's great for this one problem. I've read other studies where it shows that um, online courses 
um, or in online courses, students statistically do worse. There, like there is a, um, data out there now that is quote unquote statistically significant, saying that students do perform worse on average when they take a fully online class than when they take a face-to-face -face class. But this is a counterexample to that, right? So you've got studies showing results either way. Welcome to stats. Things can, you can always find a test, a hypothesis test that'll tell you what you want. And that's, that's why we've got errors around, right? So what's the likelihood, maybe this was the type two error, who knows? All right, so with that, let's try some multiple choice and then we will wrap this chapter up. See you in a few gang, bye.